now, um, you guys have a, a special treat. Um, I'd like to introduce the evening, or continue the evening with a little entertainment. Please join me in welcoming comedian and playwright Aladdin Ola, who also goes by Aladdin. Um, Aladdin has did a few voices in Sita Sings the Blues and was also in American Daisy. Um, Aladdin will be premiering his solo play, Dishwasher Dishes, this upcoming March at Victory Gardens in Chicago. The play deals with conflict, the conflicting feelings he suddenly begins to recount. Um, sorry, I just skipped something. Um, the play is a parallel story of Aladdin being offered the part of a terrorist in a major motion picture. As he deals with conflicting feelings, he suddenly begins to recount stories about his father arriving in Harlem during the 1940s. This is an excerpt from that play, so I will turn things over to Aladdin. Thank you, thank you. Wow, awkward being up here. It feels like I'm a professor. You're all gonna be quiz! Pay attention! God damn it! And you can't leave until you pass. Wow, can we get a more messed up microphone than this? Alright. Jesus, just like South Asians, forget about the mic. Oh. Alright, yes. Does this one work? Test, test, oh, that's just as bad, wow. Sorry. All right, I've been to plenty of panels here. How come the white panels don't have messed up mics? All right, let's not get into that. All right! I don't want to start trouble. Okay, I have a... Okay, so where to begin? Uh, actually, the play is called Dishwasher Dreams. So, uh, that's okay, we've all been drinking before. All right, so, um, where to begin? So, my real name is pronounced Alaudin. But since kindergarten and Disney messed up the name, it's now called Aladdin for all my life. <laughs> so my mother always gets pissed off because she wants me to make people pronounce it. And growing up, my mother had always had this fear that I was getting too Americanized. Aladdin, why are you becoming a Muslim? This is part of our tradition. You must become a Muslim and put down the pork chop when I'm talking to you. I tell you to pick up our Quran. I tell you to read and study Muhammad. And all you can tell me is that he floats like a butterfly. He sings like a bee. This is an old Muhammad. <laughs> See, people, people have no idea how difficult it is growing up Muslim. Islam is the Marines of religion, man. <laughs> My mother made us pray before every meal. It was mandatory. No matter where you were, you had to pray. So we'd be on 125th Street in Lexington back in the day in the 70s. Welcome to McDonald's, can I take your order? Auzubillah, even I said, no, honey, Rosie. Would you like fries with that? Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. But you know, I grew up in the birth of hip hop. And when I was a little kid, around like in third grade, I fell in love would run DMC. And all the kids in my neighborhood wanted to wear their sneakers. So I approached my mom. Amma, Amma, please, can I get these brand new shell top Adidas? Allow Dean in Bangladesh, I will nothing on my feet. Amma, please, can I get these brand new, these brand new Kareem Abdul Jabbar? Did you say Kareem Abdul Jabbar? <laughs> is he a Muslim? I don't know, Ma. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Please, Ma, they're only $19.99. Are they a lot? $19.99? That is a lot of money for a sneaker. But Ma, these are Muslim sneakers. <laughs> now, my father came from a tiny village in Bangladesh called Norkal. Now, Norkal is so bad it made the South Bronx look like the Hamptons. <laughs> and my father used to hang out with these rebels, these hooligans, these outcasts from the village. And they used to love to sneak onto trains and go to Calcutta to watch these American films like On the Waterfront starring Marlon Brando. And my father could recite any line from this movie, but always at the most inappropriate time. <laughs> like when I introduced him to my first girlfriend, Rena. Hey, Pop, this is my girlfriend, Rena. Oh, girlfriend, ah, it is a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> it was you, Charlie, my own brother. I could have been a contender. I could have had class instead of a bum, which is what I am. Let's face it, Charlie. <laughs> After that, Rena only went out with white guys. <laughs> now, my father became the first one in our family to immigrate to America. And he landed in Spanish Harlem. Now, I've often wondered, still to this day, how did my father pick Spanish Harlem of all places to immigrate to? I mean, why not France? Why not England? 
Why not Canada? How the hell did Spanish Harlem become the promised land? What, did he get a brochure in the mail? Hey you, living in the third world, living conditions got you down? Are you tired of wiping your ass with leaves? Well just squeeze the shaman and come on over to America. That's right, land of the free, home of the brave. And we don't want you to just come to any old place in America. Oh no, we want you to come to the safest place in America. That's right, Spanish Harlem. <laughs> and what's that you say? You can't speak any English? Don't worry, neither can anyone else in Spanish Harlem. <laughs> so what are you waiting for? Don't delay, get on that boat and come here right away. So my father took the offer and he landed on 110th Street. And he dropped his bags and he looked around. He made it. And as a tear rolled down his eyes, the very first words out of his mouth was, please don't shoot me, I'm from Noah Kali. Please don't shoot me. Yo, shut the fuck, shit. You from Noah who? Noah Kali? Man, where in Puerto Rico is that? <laughs> in South Asia, man, you don't look Chinese to me. Why'd you come here? <laughs> you came here for freedom? Boy, you's a dumb mother. Ain't no freedom in America, who told you that? The Constitution of the United States, yeah, I heard of it. Well, look, brother, in America, there never was freedom, never is freedom, ain't never gonna be freedom. <laughs> to them, you're just another nigga with straight hair. So on behalf of this country's welcoming committee, I'm a count to three, and you better give me your money. One, what you doing on your knees? Two, you praying? Three, oh, snap, you a Muslim? I'm a Muslim too, I don't like them, man. Get up, get up, get up, man. Oh, no, no, I ain't gonna shoot you. Well, it says so in the Quran. Thou should not bust a cap in the ass of a fellow Muslim. <laughs> All right, so check this out. Being that we both Muslims, uh, here, take this $10, put it in your pocket. Go to 116 in Lenox. Go to mosque number seven. Ask for Minister Malcolm X, and they take care of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, hold on. What's your name? Uh, Habib, I hope you find your freedom. Walaikum salam. Now, my father worked for years as a dishwasher. And he worked with these co-workers, and they worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they never complained. They were from all over the world. And he told me about one of them, Aladdin. I knew this guy, good-looking fellow from Bahamas. First day I meet him, he said, you know, Habib, one day you're not see me on a big screen. I come here to be an actor, not to watch dishes. Everybody in the kitchen started making this, this poor man sit. They make fun of him. Hey, check out Shakespeare over here. He wants to be in the movies. Yo, get this, get this. To be or not to be, man. <laughs> I tell Sid, look, everybody is laughing at you. I don't care about these Ross Bumble Clock. Man, these people, they give up on their dreams long time ago, but me, I ain't ever gonna stop dreaming. Haven't you ever wanted something so bad, Habib? You can't taste it. Well, I did want to be my own chef and own my own restaurant. I didn't fuggle better, but this is crazy. I am just a dishwasher. Sometimes, Habib, you have to be crazy. So Sid quit working as a dishwasher to become an actor. About three, four years later, he come to our store. He give us tickets. It say he is in some play this opening night, which I don't understand because how can you open a night? <laughs> but he is my friend, so I decide to go. When I get to theater, I do my business, because you know when you have to go to the bathroom, you have to do your business. So I'm doing my business. As I'm doing my business, I notice there is a man staring at me. When I finish doing my business, I turn around. I say, what the hell are you looking at me for? Would you like a napkin, sir? Ili Allah, you take a urination, and there is a man who gives you a napkin. This America has something else. <laughs> so I give my ticket to Usher. I go to sit down. I see all my coworkers in one row. It is the very first time I see all my coworkers without their aprons. I go to sit down. Lights go out. Everybody is quiet. It is just like magic. Then lights go up. I see this man on stage, but I don't recognize him. He looks like Sid, but he's not talking like Sid. He is on stage talking to his wife about his dreams, but all she is talking about is eggs. Man say to his woman, I got me a dream. She say, eat your eggs. Man say to his woman, I gotta take hold of this here world somehow. She say, man say, I gotta take hold of this life. I'm choked to death. All you can say is, eat your eggs, it's getting cold. Well, damn all these eggs, and damn all the eggs, that there ever was. When this play is over, everybody is on their feet. They are cheering, bravo Sid, bravo. Then I go backstage. I see all these champagne, wine, perfume smell. Everybody looks like a big shot. They are all hugging Sid. Sid comes over to me. He gives me a big hug. No one is laughing now. I whisper to him. We talk for a little while and then he asks me, when am I going to open the Myra own restaurant? 
आज फागुल बेटा सिद दिस इज क्रेजी आई एम जस्ट अ डिश वॉशर यू नो हबीब द ब्रिटिश डोंट ओन अस एनी मोर यू कैन बी फ्री इफ यू वांट टू बी फ्री दैट वाज द वेरी लास्ट टाइम आई एवर सो सिद सून ही लीव टू गो टू हॉलीवुड टू बी बिग शॉट एक्टर यू सी हिम ऑल द टाइम इन फिल्म्स ही इवन वांट टू आस्क फॉर नॉट हैविंग टू प्ले अ क्रिमिनल और अ जेनिटर Oh, everyone today calls him Sidney Poitier, but I knew him when he was a dishwasher named Sid. Now, when I was about 12, I used to hang out with these hooligans, these rebels, these outcasts of my neighborhood, and we used to sneak on the subway to go to Times Square. Now, Times Square back in the day is a little different than it is now. <laughs> oh, today there's Spider-Man, Mary Poppins. But well, back in the day, it was pimps, prostitutes, and peep shows. <laughs> and one thing that really blew my mind about New York is that they would have peep shows, and right next to them, they'd have a fake ID store. And no one ever was surprised there was a fake ID store next to a peep show. <laughs> Now, our crew used to go and watch Bruce Lee films, and you could see like seven of them for like two dollars. Enter the Dragon, Return the Dragon, Bitch Slap the Dragon, etc., etc. <laughs> Now, our crew tagged graffiti. Now graffiti possessed the badass cubism of Picasso along with the ferocity the ferocity of Jackson Pollock splatter crashing on canvas only we didn't have any canvas our name was in Banksy We tagged the streets and subways of New York City because that's how we told the world who we were. We weren't trying to get into the MoMA or the Metropolitan Museum of Safe Art for the Elite. We were just trying to tag and we were having a whole lot of fun until we got busted. And my father had to bail me out on the 23rd precinct on 102nd Street. Aladdin, I never thought that when I come to this country, I'd have to take my son out of jail. Halam's out for this garbage drawing on walls. It's not garbage, Pop. It's graffiti. What would you know about it? I let the whole world know who I am through this art you call garbage. What you know? You just some Uncle Tom fresh off the boat dishwasher. Oh, that's what you think of your father, huh? You think I don't know what it's like because I'm a dishwasher, huh? Listen to me. Long time ago, before you was born, if anyone from our village come to America, if they go to Alaska, we go visit them. So our uncle, your chachaloti, was in Georgia, Macon, Georgia. So we go down south. So we very hungry. We go to restaurant. We sit down at booth. We say, waitress, I'm very very hungry. I like to have a cheeseburger. Make sure you put American. That is my favorite. Uh, excuse me, sugar. We don't take your can. You don't have to take this to go. What do you mean, take this to go? I am hungry. Is that not your time? Uh, no, sugar. We don't serve y'all on account of Jim Crow. What? Who is Jim Crow? <laughs> Tell Mr. Crow, Habib Ula is very, very hungry. I want to speak to Jim Crow right now. Uh, excuse me, son. What seems to be the problem? Oh, you must be Jim Crow. Hello, my name is Habib Ula. Oh <laughs> uh, no, sir. I'm an officer. Jim Crow is a law that states that ain't no colors allowed in this here establishment. That means no spicks, injuns, or niggers. Not get a goy. But son, if a man is hungry, he has the right to eat. This is America, and this is the South. You niggers are going to jail. <laughs> so Aladdin, I know exactly what you're doing. You are being a how do you say this word? Defiant. But at least my defiance stands for something. What are you doing? Putting your signature on a wall? What do I know, right? I am just a dishwasher. Thank you. Mm -hmm.